in this video, we're going to take a look at the uh, kind of core of SPHR, and that's the employee management functions. Okay, and it all starts with employee records. Uh, we also track record updates, those we saw earlier in the employee portal that they can submit updates to their uh, employee data. Employee changes are what uh, we saw in that same video from managers. Those are changes in status such as salary changes, promotions, those type of things, transfers. Um, there's an employee documents library, employee compliance or certifications tracking, uh, and we'll take a look at that. Um, benefits and benefits selected by employees. This is mostly used in the U.S. Um, and can be hidden. And by the way, any of these things can be hidden uh, if you're not going to use them. Performance reviews and then policy acknowledgments. And, and there will be a whole separate uh, section uh, video on um, policy acknowledgments and performance reviews. But let's go take a look at the core of this. You can either select it from here or from here, and that's the employee records themselves. So each employee has an employee record and um, represented here. Now, one of the things you'll see, though, is when I open up the employee record, we'll see all the employee information, who they report to and so on, but uh, also we'll see cross-references to all the different activities related to the employee. And that's what we call a super view. Okay, so if I click on Donna Martin here, This is what we call a super view. And what you'll see is everything related to Donna, we are able to see in one place. So, of course, we have uh, a number of different fields here. We have fields that describe Donna, okay, what her status is. And you never delete employees, by the way, um, for um, history type uh, and legal um, reasons. Uh, you can make them inactive. Uh, you can keep track of different types of employees what their role is in the organization, and of course, hire date, uh, source of hire. You can even track, you know, did they come in directly or from a recruiter, um, and date of exit, reason for exit, and all those. And then, of course, all the general information here as well, and uh, contact information, as what address and so on, emergency contact information, all the usual things that you would need to keep for an employee. Um, the next tab here is notes. And this is uh, any notes about this employee. Uh, this is important and we have date and time stamps of who made the notes. Um, this could be good performance notes. This could be uh, other things that uh, you need to know as well. There's payroll information. Uh, this uh, is not necessarily pulled from the payroll system but um, is really for reporting purposes as well as change purposes. So when we take a look at um, record updates or changes submitted, we can see when the last salary change was and the percentage and so on. Um, learning and awards is exactly what it says. Uh, if you have training classes you want to keep track of, of what employees have taken them, uh, this is where you can do that. Um, and also background information on Donna as well. Information about performance reviews. What was her last rating? Um, when was her last review? When's the next one due? And uh, if you have this checked, which is uh, by default, it will automatically send an upcoming review reminder 30 days before this date uh, to Donna and her manager. We can also see a history of all the reviews that uh, Donna has had as well and open them up. This is a cross-reference with the reviews document library. Speaking of documents, we also can see all documents in the employee documents related to Donna and uh, be able to uh, do them from here. Uh, you can actually add documents uh, right from the record here, or you could add them when you're um, actually in the library itself. Um, we have benefit plans. This is what benefit um, plans Donna is on. This is mostly used in the United States. However, you could apply this, and we've customized it to track cars and cell phones and other things too. Um, related to employees. Certifications, very important, especially in healthcare and uh, other uh, regulated industries uh, out there. And so we keep track of any certifications Donna has to have, what the renewal dates are. And again, we can add more here. Uh, we'll be talking about certifications in just a few minutes. And then record updates. This is all record updates. So um, if Donna um, had a change, looks like she had a position change and a salary change in her history there. This was submitted uh, by her manager and went through approval. 
and then record changes. We saw early in an earlier video how employees could do this, and this one was an address change for Donna. And then finally, we have policy acknowledgments. And this shows what policy group Donna is in. She's a California employee, so she needs to acknowledge um, any related California like employee handbook. And she did that uh, here, and that shows the acknowledgment. And it shows a history of acknowledgments, too. So the nice thing about this is everything about Donna is right here in this super view. Now back to the employee records. Now just like um, some of the other uh, data lists that we've seen here, uh, you have capabilities to do a lot of different things. So if you just want to see, for instance, again, all the permanent employees, you could filter to that. There are many different views. So I could look at all employees by uh, department, okay, and be able to look across departments uh, here. I can look at them by location uh, as well and look at the different employees in different job um, locations, too. Uh, I could also go in and look at them by employee type. Um, I could see upcoming reviews, which policy groups people are in, and um, a, a performance and appraisal report. So many different types of views of employees, and it makes it very easy to uh, manage across many different employees. So that's kind of the employee record side of it. But now let's go and see what other things we have. So when we look at record updates here, this again is um, changes of status for different uh, employees out here. Um, in employee management, we also have employee changes. This is a record of all changes that were submitted um, uh, by uh, employees too. So position change, oh, this is actually the the position changes and so on. The last one I showed you was uh, record updates, addresses, and so on. Now, it's important that we keep this information because um, we actually had an example of one customer, a, a manufacturing customer, where a, a worker got hurt um, out there and um, they couldn't contact the emergency contact of that worker. And the family was going to sue the company because they couldn't contact him. Well, it turns out that the employee actually put the wrong phone number in for his wife. And, uh, and so that was clearly the fault of the employee. They finally, obviously, did get in contact with him, but uh, there was a delay. But the company was saved because they had an audit log of all contacts in here as well. Um, another important area here is employee documents. Uh, this does is a list of all documents. It is a document library here, but uh, you can also go in and look at documents such as all I-9s. If uh, you have to uh, have to do an immigration audit or something like that, you've got I-9s for uh, every employee here shown. And so again, you can go in and uh, do different things here. Um, we'll look at later, by the way, you can use Adobe Sign or DocuSign to get things signed off. Uh, that's part of our onboarding. Another very important part is certifications. And this is certifications for all employees, so safety certifications, um, could be uh, other types of certifications, quality certifications, and it will highlight people that are past due on their certifications. But this also um, allows you to go in and put training links into certifications uh, as well, so that when you do um, alert an employee and their manager that a certification is coming up, you can also include that link to renew the certification uh, in the actual certifications themselves, too. Um, other things in employee management, we had talked a little bit about benefits. You can actually define benefit plans uh, in here and what benefit plans you offer in the United States, especially um, with multiple state type companies. This happens to be Radiant Solar in our scenario here, and it operates across California, Nevada, and Arizona. And so there's many different benefit plans by where the employee is located. And so just keeping track of all those benefit plans and which employees are in which plans, that's really what this benefit selected does. And we can see for any employee uh, what plans they're on, um, you know, the effective and termination dates and uh, other things you may want to keep track of, like dependents and um, what, you know, level of deduction and stuff like that uh, the employee's on as well. Too. And then finally, uh, down here, we have performance reviews. We're going to do a separate review of that, but this is all performance reviews for any employees. This is what was cross-referenced uh, for Donna in that case. 
And uh, also, we have policy acknowledgments. And this is where when you have a new policy, such as a handbook, employee handbook, or uh, some other type of policy that you need them to um, acknowledge, or it's not really a sign-off, it's called the electronic sign-off, um, we have a process for doing that, and we'll do, be doing a separate video there. But we can see all employee acknowledgments here. So that's really the employee management side of this. Now, one other nice thing, too, that I'll show you is we also use Power BI and a dashboard to keep track of employee um, information and trends and so on. So let's take a look at that. Okay, this is the HR dashboard. We just clicked on uh, HR dashboard on the uh, front page and it brings up the um, employee information dashboard. So we can see employee change count per month. Uh, we can actually go in and you know filter it by years or quarters or departments or locations uh, as well. Here's employees by type, by role, by department, by location, and so on. And as we showed earlier, even certifications do uh, here, you know, you can click on any one of these and see it all filtered down to just that year, for instance, and it'll dynamically change. So that's really been kind of a overview of how we handle employee data. Um, we do have options such as when employee records get updated to actually update their um, profile in their uh, active directory. Uh, for instance, who they report to and so on, uh, we have an option that uh, we can push that information up there. Also, when you're populating your employee data, you can do that from an Excel spreadsheet that perhaps you uh, uh, exported from your payroll system to get it started. You don't have to type all this information in um, as well, too. So uh, that is an overview of employee records management and employee information management in SPHR.